Hi again, welcome to the garage on Pierre. This time around, it's uh, about slitting saws. Got different models here. Uh, the project will be uh, to cut some pretty big uh, parts. My friend Philip is uh, already gone with it, but uh, we made a video about uh, cutting some uh, 8620, which is uh, you know a hardenable steel. Um, it's a nail, but uh, you know the, the chunk is about two and a quarter inch uh, in diameter. It needs to be slotted about uh, halfway, so we need bigger uh, slitting saw and uh, we'll try maybe to discuss a little bit what uh, what uh, what for what for how to and uh, what are the issues with uh, slitting saws and uh, setting up first thing we can see at uh, first glance is different sizes and you got different thicknesses you got like uh, six inches 150 millimeters you got five inches about 130 millimeters um, another important thing about this is the arbor um, you're gonna have two two things to look for when installing a uh, slitting saw. Is uh, first, when you see that the slitting saw is turning very regularly, it's it's fun. But uh, why does it turn regularly, and uh, why should it turn regularly? First of the problems you may encounter is the wobble. So the saw is like the sides. I'm, I exaggerate, but it goes a little bit like this here. And uh, that's not something you want. It's not going to be able to make regular cuts. It's going to be uh, uh, affecting the width, the direction, and everything. Everything about uh, you know the um, you know the precision of the, the the cut. I mean, the work is just about useless. This is one of the factors. What causes a wobble? Uh, a crooked. Most of the time, a crooked uh, arbor will do this, or a warped or uh, you know abused saw or something like that. If this is a saw. Throw a, throw a saw away, I mean, it's just about impossible to bring it back. Uh, if it's the arbor, chances are you're going to have to throw it away again, or uh, it just it's uh, not exactly something that uh, can be brought back. So if your uh, arbor is going good in this direction, no wobble, that's a good thing. Another uh, parameter to look for is the uh, concentricity. Concentricity of the, um, the mounting part of the arbor and the mounting part of the seat of the saw. So concentricity is going to affect the saw in this direction. I'll exaggerate it again this time, but that's about it. So if the saw goes in either direction, it's not what you're looking for. Um, a little bit of a boat is about normal, a few thousandths or uh, less than one tenth of a mm, uh, yeah, one tenth of a millimeter or much, or much less is something you're uh, aiming for. Um, there's another uh, Another thing about the uh, eccentricity, uh, whether it's like I say, the uh, sitting, you know, the seater, the seating pla par platform for the saw is not made, they manufactured properly with the uh, arbor here, or the second cause of that could be the uh, sharpening of the saw that uh, has been sharpened once and uh, more material has been taken from one side than from the other side. So this can be corrected by resharpening this this uh, saw again, uh, up to a certain extent, uh, naturally, but. Uh, once you're okay, you're uh, all set up. There's also one direction that you're uh, looking for to install your saw on the uh, on the arbor. The uh, <coughs> screw here that's used to hold the uh, the saw into uh, you know tighten there is right at, right at the right-handed uh, tread. So you want to make the saw turn this direction here, which is you're looking the shaft at this direction here. It's counterclockwise. By turning counterclockwise, it's going to apply force into this direction here and force the teeth and the saw itself into this direction, wanting to tighten the C, uh, dismounting screw. This is the ideal situation. Even if you have a, let's say you have a, let's say in there you have some key seats or keys, uh, you can rely on them. Uh, lots of times I will operate without the keys, but uh, you really want to have the screw getting on the tighter side. Otherwise, it's going to dismount itself, and you don't want this. Another uh, another thing is um, the teeth. You got see see these teeth are pretty big. These teeth are pretty big, as opposed to these ones which are much smaller. And uh, reason to look for that too is the amount of material you want to remove and the nature of the material. Let's say you go to um, you know, a bigger chunk of steel because this, with the, you know, a bigger blade like these, you're going to run into bigger parts and you're going to stay 
longer into the uh, the metal you're going to cut. So it's going to have time to accumulate a much longer chip. So you need some room between the teeth to accumulate the chips until they get evacuated at the other end of the cut. This is important. If you um, don't have enough room between those teeth, the chip will <laughs> sorry the teeth the, the teeth will pack up and eventually cause friction and probably even some blockage. So uh, you might end up with a broken setup or broken teeth or generated heat that you don't really want to uh, have in there. So teeth size according to material. Like if you're trying to use a blade with these uh, very tiny teeth in, in the aluminum, don't uh, try not to go for uh, you know, deep cuts or whatever because aluminum will pack up very easily in these, uh, in these little saws. So you, you better use saws with bigger teeth. And you got assortments of those, so you can, that's something to look for. When you mount this into a regular uh, manual machine, try to get the, uh, oops, try to get the arbor as far as it can go in there, because uh, mostly with the bigger, the bigger the saw, the greater the force that will try to push your part when you get in there. I mean, that's going to try push your part in the other, the other direction here. So you want something as short as possible here, as your setup will allow. So that's what that will determine your driving speed into the material and uh, how much pressure you're going to be able to put in there until you get uh, wobble or you get, uh, you know, um, sorry, uh, chatter or whatever. So that's something you're going to have to feel. Um, once you're in there, oh, another thing, keep your, uh, your quill as high as possible in there solidly locked so it doesn't go up and down. If you're working with round parts, okay, you can use two, two V's. Make sure that uh, when you tie, get the, all the slack in it from out of there, a good, good tightening and you're there. When entering the part, make sure you got the clearance for the bottom of the, uh, the arbor there because the arbor may, okay, the arbor may need uh, more space than this here. So uh, make sure you clear wherever you want to make the slot you got enough uh, space there you got some arbors with uh, smaller uh, imprints you know like smaller hangouts in the uh, in the bottom there so might be a good idea to look for that too if you need uh, to make you know slots near the uh, surface there okay as you're going to be seeing in the uh, final video we're using a five inch uh, blade exactly the size of this we're going to be coming the actual maximum depth that we're wanting to go which is halfway to the uh, the, uh, the chuck, the, uh, the chunk, the metal, is already calculated. We're going to be approaching from this direction. The parts come in this direction. We got, it's going to be conventional milling, no clay milling with this. And you're going to just start rubbing. You know, the few teeth are rubbing, get very slowly towards the, the blade, and that's going to start scoring. Once you get some scoring in there, the blade will stabilize for the up and down position, then just go into the regular uh, the regular feed speed, and you'll be able to cut the part all at once. This will give you a very straight cut from beginning to the end. You'll see that in the actual video. I know this introduction's been you know maybe long a little bit for the people that are uh, having problems to focus for a long time, but let's go to the actual uh, making the chips and the actual execution of. Uh, all what we just uh, seen here. Okay, this is uh, five inches, just about, or metric 128 millimeters, just about. You can cut uh, pretty wide with this. There you go. 45 millimeters or one one inch and three quarters at least, which is not too bad. We're gonna make a slot in this uh, jack stand special jack stand and we're going about halfway uh, to the top of this. Let's see if we don't make a boo-boo or a bozo or whatever. It's either going to be how to do it or how not to do it. Right direction. Yeah, that's a good start. That's a good start. We're we're turning uh, 90. Yeah, it's about 90. So that's, uh, it's been oiled. I'm going to break it myself. It's your saw, my mill. Your saw, my mill. I don't even know how you... I lined it up. Oh, forget it. Stop. Back, 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 back. First thing to what to do, tie it up. Okay, we uh, put the chances on our side. We tied it up. It's manual advance.
There's a little bit of chatter at the end, but uh, so far so good. Six twenty, it's annealed. It's going to be a one pass cut, I mean, no need to uh, pull around after that. This is uh, normally with a decent uh, saw blade, one pass is uh, usually no problem. Good lubrication is important, but that's it. Ah, another important thing about this is a stable platform. Now we're not removing too much material, we're just very close on the end. So one inch and uh, three, uh, three. Uh, one inch and uh, one eighth deep. Not too bad in the uh, eighty-six twenty in the yield. Keys. Don't forget to thumbs up, eh? Hey, uh... Yeah. Job done. Who's Neil? Neil uh, Neil Atkins. Oh, okay. The guy who goes uh, goes in, uh, into space and sing uh, space. Neil Armstrong. No, Neil Atkins. Was it Neil Atkins? No. No, the one who sings uh, Space Oddity in the. Uh, David the Bowie. No, the Canadian astronaut that yeah, went to that, do that's the. That's Chris Hatfield. Okay, it's, it's close. Close enough. Ah! <laughs> I mean, <laughs> my brain in your uh, your arms and uh, whatever. I mean, okay, keep on with the job. I mean, it's gonna be uh, next. I'm gonna I'm gonna go into my encyclopedia. Yeah, you do that. Try and learn stuff. Hey, mostly the asshole that doesn't know what is up from is down. <laughs> Some one asshole. Uh, there are more than one, but uh, anyway, this. Fuck them all. <laughs> well, back to drilling. 